Hello there, Shakers. Welcome to another episode of Mind Shack Podcast. This podcast has been developing and growing beyond our expectations. We would really love to thank you. That's all. And we hope you enjoy today's video. Hello, hello, greetings, Dumila, Jumbo. Welcome to season four of the Mind Shack Podcast. And a happy 2022 to you. Um, I know we're not supposed to say that um, after the 7th of January, but hey, we're rule breakers. <laughs> uh, we are a Gen Z podcast that focuses on discussing societal issues, entrepreneurial leadership, culture, and we board on topics of psychology for Africans. Uh, all we basically do is we aim to shake out the cobwebs on the social issues we see in the world today in a very African way. Today, we're looking at um, raising the 21st century African child. That sounds like a, like a mouthful. But when we talk about raising the 21st century African child, there's various things we have to take into account. I looked at this episode and I started asking myself questions. Is it different to be growing up as a 21st century African child as opposed to the 20th century? What makes our, our, our upbringing different to that of our parents? Are we more confident? Are we more daring? Are we more problematic? Are we better looking? I have no idea. Um, so, my shakers, this is episode nine, entitled "Raising an African Child." Woo! Woo! <laughs> On the show with me today, I have Noni. Noni is going to be riding this wave of intellect um, and cultural source with me. Uh, Noni, hello. How are you feeling today? How are you doing in this new year? I know that everyone is supposed to say seasons, greetings. I. <laughs> despise it but i'll still say it for cordial purposes how are you exactly. doing thank you so much for having me thank you thank you so much for for agreeing to be on this on this uh, episode i don't know if i should say that because you're on you, you hosted several other episodes in a fantastic fashion so maybe thank you for inviting me onto your show today today <laughs> <laughs> um okay so when we talk about raising the 21st uh, century, or raising a child in the 21st century, Noni and I aren't necessarily stating that, you know, we're parents and we've come to this amazing realization that raising a kid in this century is so hard because we are self our, our parents. I am I am not a parent. I don't know about Noni if you're a parent. I can't I can't speak for you. Okay. Okay, um, about it. <laughs> Um, so it's not necessarily saying that we that we are parents and like we're talking about raising uh, kids in this in this uh, century ourselves. When you look at raising a child in this century, we ask how have we been raised our children uh, as children by our parents, and then also also asking how are our how were our parents raised as children in the twentieth century, and how would we like to shape the world for ourselves in the future. Um, and to that, I would like to ask Noni the first question um, of this magnificent discussion. If you could describe your upbringing using a well-known movie or TV series, uh, what would it be? Like, how would you describe your family using like a TV series? That's such a hard question because I think I've said this before. I mean, I come from a very blended family. Um, yeah. I an array of siblings, steps, halves, um, a stepmom, I used to have a stepdad, and you know, there's just a, a mix match of what we all call an African family. Yeah. But a good way to describe it is probably a mix of girlfriends <laughs> and, and uh, that show, Bill Cosby show. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I honestly forgot the name of that show. Maybe even some Fresh Prince. And I only say this because, um, okay, firstly, it's terrible that these are American shows, but it is what it is. Yeah. Girlfriends, because I grew up in a household filled with women. There were yeah. eight of us at some point, or nine of us. Whoa. Um, we didn't have, yeah, we didn't have a, a single man in our household until I was like late into high school. Um. And also just like my family, my mom and her sisters, parents has like, you know, they, they are our mothers. Every single one of us, every single one of them parents us like they are our mothers. So um, just, it's all girls, girls, girls and a trickle of boys. Um, 
And then the, the Cosby show is mostly my family that I'm currently with in Johannesburg, which is my father, my stepmom, my sister, like everyone is different ages. It's all a bit crazy. Everyone's at different stages in their lives. It's all different things, but it sort of comes together because, you know, you know, we love each other. And, <laughs> and the last bit is, is just mainly just the fact that the, the family that Will Smith or rather, uh, what was his name in the show? Will. Uh, uh, Will, well, yeah. It was Will. It was a blended family. It was, you know, he was the cousin and everybody else was younger cousin, older cousin. You know, it's just a bunch of things. So it's just like a mashup of different strange environments that sort of cause this, this person. So I think all three of those shows are a good kind of That reference. sounds really, really, really cool. Um, I must say, just... In parentheses, open brackets. I love Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Close brackets. Okay, you can put that. But, um, <laughs> that aside, like, okay, how would I describe how I grew up? Mm -hmm. Have you watched Everybody Hates Chris? Oh my God! Please don't tell me you're Chris. <laughs> I feel like that's how I grew up. Um, except that, like, I like I I'm not I'm not the I'm not the oldest. So um, I'm I'm the youngest <clears throat> I'm the youngest uh, son in my family, um, and I feel like it was a little, a little bit like everybody hates Chris, not for very many reasons because my my family is quite uh quite particular. But I would only say just because of just because of my of my dad. My dad reminds me of the dad and everybody hates Chris. <laughs> he was always he was always calculating. <laughs> you left the tap running while you're brushing your teeth. That's but also, years. isn't that every dad? Isn't that every dad? <laughs> to this day, my dad is 60. We are all adults. He's yeah. still calculating. Sheesh. Like, <laughs> my dad will calculate. My dad. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I love him to bits. But, um, yeah, sometimes it just, just reminds me of, of, like, he just used to calculate everything. And, like, we weren't always super rich when we were growing up. Um, it's a little bit like the everybody hates Chris family. We weren't always super rich. Um, and we had moments where like we would struggle. My, my dad was, uh, he was working as a pastor. My mom was, uh, she had like a, she was a stay at home mom for a while. Then she opened a gift shop and then like, that's how we would make our, our, our money. Um, but anyway, just, I'll just, I just want to find out about how, how your family is because of course they say, um, and this is going to be my, my second question. Uh, it's, an off, it's often a, a known African saying that says it takes a village to raise a child you know everyone says it takes a village to raise a child but most people don't actually know that there's a second part of that saying so it goes that it takes a village to raise a child and a community to keep the parents sane what do you what do you think about the saying i think it's very accurate in how in how the fact that like no one knows what they're doing yeah. no one knows what they're doing even grandmothers and grandfathers who we absolutely try and tr and test on a daily basis. They don't know what they're doing. Everything mm. is new on a, every single day. So you definitely need a bunch of people that are going to help support the structure. But also those people also support the two people that are trying to parent, even though they have no clue what the heck is going on. I've seen parents drop babies. I've seen what? parents forget babies. I've seen, parents, I've seen parents have kids on leashes. <laughs> you know, those leashes are like a backpack. And I get it. I get it. I get it. I wouldn't know what to do with them. These things are weird. They're, they're new humans. You don't know what to do with them. You don't know what to teach them, what not to teach them, what to speak to them about, what not to speak to them about. So you basically need the structure of family and community to help sort of bring out the best in you, but also to just hold you back when you're doing too much. And you're just, please, it's not mm. that deep. Your child is not the only child in the world. So, I mean, I get it. I just, <laughs> unfortunately, I just keep thinking about me as a parent. It's scary. It's scary as hell. Yeah. Yeah, um, I get that. So you wanna hear this, this saying, it takes a village to raise a child and a community to keep the parents sane. I don't really see much of uh, I don't really see much of community 
um, especially, well, when I was growing up, we had a house and I knew who everyone on the street was. We knew everyone on the street because we used to play together. So I knew right, that right next to me, there was this, this weird Ukrainian kid and his sister, his, whose dad was a doctor, whose house I went to when I had pneumonia because dad treated, treated me once. And then we used to play, play with the other kid next to his house. And then we used to go to the other house. We knew that they were like old parents. Then on the other side, we had like, a, like an old German couple who owned that house. Like, so we knew everyone on the street. And even though our street was more or less, well, we had a lot of Africans on our street, but our street had lots of Europeans. We always had this thing of like, go to auntie so-and-so's house, go to uncle so-and-so's house and get food. And the same way auntie so-and-so and uncle so-and-so could also discipline you if, you know, things got a little bit out of hand. I actually remember a story from my brother. He was playing with his cousin and his cousin's mom, he was doing something naughty. His cousin's mom came in and she beat her son, his cousin, and she beat him as well. And my brother comes home, he's like, ah, ah, Auntie Irene beat me. <laughs> it's like, for what? And my brother explains, she's like, yeah, no, come here. I'm going to add another one. <laughs> So I guess it's all families then. I guess it's an African thing. And, and this is this is something that that I, I've been thinking about also as well when we when we uh, when I was thinking thinking about the episode is that the, the difference between raising an African child in the 21st century versus raising a European child is that we have way more community. Um, especially kids from most African countries that I've spoken to they know the concept of respecting somebody else's mom, just like it's your mom, you know, somebody else's dad, just like it's your dad. And even though like, yeah. Um, and it has to do as well with like absence. If, if your mom is not there because she's gone to work in the city, you can go and stay with uncle and auntie so-and-so for like an X number of months or X number of, of days. And that'll be treated like it's your house as well. You know, so I find like this whole thing of community is something that really does exist in African, in African community, in African countries. But in Europe, I haven't seen that. That's actually very true. I mean, I hadn't thought about it like that. And I think now that I'm remembering all the things that I experienced as a child, because I explained to you that my mother has four sisters and all their children are, are my sisters and brothers. And in case, I mean, in South Africa, we call that cousin brother, yeah. which is <laughs> cousin sister and cousin brother. It sounds crazy, but that's how you are taught to live. This new person comes. And also the other thing is, I mean, I was speaking about my blended family. I'm realizing now blended families have always been a thing in Africa. Like it's a thing. I mean, there's people that come in and out of your household. You're not too sure how they're related to you, but- But they're your uncle. <laughs> but your uncle. <laughs> So it's just a it's it's community that sort of is bred and and we live it. But now looking at how the world is shaped and how Western the world has gone, I don't really see that. I mean, in my streets, I think we only know my neighbor um, and the lady that lives opposite. That's about it. I don't know anybody else. And we've been living in this house for maybe 15 to 20 ish years. Mm. But that's that's not just remote to Joburg, it's everywhere. A lot of people just don't have community anymore. There are places where you go there and you're welcomed because it's your aunt's church member or your aunt, your uncle's drinking buddy's house. And you're always gonna be treated the same way. And that's just how we grew up now. And also I do think it's, it's with the advent of child abuse and just these crazy stories that we hear about people swindling people out of their money, uh, mixing you know things for kids and doing strange things to, especially in you know the African context where there's also like myths of like witchcraft and you know things like that. Mm -hmm. You just sort of want to keep your family away from all the crazy and keep them sheltered under your roof and make sure that no one else gets to them. So I kind of get it, but also I know what kind of impact that family, that extension of like community did for me and my cousins. This is a thank you to you.
you a mind shaker and listen out this episode we highly highly appreciate you joining in on all of these episodes if you can just take a second to share this link to someone to have them tap into these episodes that will be so highly appreciated you are the fuel to what we're doing here so please share the link please like please comment please subscribe or follow in whichever platform you're in and we will see you on the next episode as you continue to fuel us through thank you I would like, Noni, with your permission, I would humbly request that we uh, play a game. Would you like to play a game? It's a very simple game. It's only four questions. It better not be something that's going to embarrass me, but I'm in. It would embarrass me, honestly. It would embarrass <laughs> most people. So embarrassment is the name of the game. It's not, it's called, it's not called embarrassment, but it's, <laughs> it's a different game. Um, <clears throat> So this is, this is called uh, the stats game. Uh, I love stats. Uh, you have basically have to fill in the blank with the stats. The reason why I'm doing this is because uh, we, it's always good to keep tabs, keep numbers on um, progression in Africa, um, especially as an African youth, as an African child. It's always good to have some idea of numbers in your head so that when somebody tells you something, you can say, actually, no, this stat counters that. Or it makes you think about stats yourself. Uh, so question number one, with a median age of dash in 2020, Africa's population is the youngest in the world. Basically, guess the median age of Africa. Median age. Um, Just like the average age. Yeah, I'd like to think 25-ish. Not too bad, not too bad. Um, with a median age of 19.7 in 2020, basically 20 years old, Africa's population is the youngest in the world. Crazy. I wouldn't have thought so. But you know what? I'm actually thinking of a conversation that I had with my father that we no longer have any elders. And if we have elders, mm. we're just excited at the fact that we have them. Yeah. It makes so much sense. Yeah, definitely. Um, question number two. We know that youth un unemployment is a huge problem. In South Africa, which has the second largest GDP on the continent, dash percent of young people were jobless in 2019. Probably 40. Not too, not too far, but I'm afraid that the figure is much higher than that. Uh, in South Africa, 55% of young <gasps> people were jobless in 2019. Um, and actually, in preparing this, I saw that unemployment is the, the driving factor for protests in Africa at this point. Because who's unemployed? The youth. What do the youth do? They have energy. What do they do when they have energy? They <laughs> expel it. <laughs> I feel bad because now we're in 2022, and the concept of people losing so many jobs in 2020 and 2021 means that the the average unemployment rate in this country is probably skyrocketed to like 70. Sheesh. That's that that's that's actually a nightmare for me. Um the pandemic for me was was uh was hard. Um I wasn't working, I was just I was a student and I had just finished that. And getting into the working world after the pandemic for me was uh was incredibly difficult. Um sorry we have two more questions. Uh, in 2015, 86% of all African educated physicians working in the US were trained in Africa. So we're trained in Egypt, Ghana, Nigeria, and South Africa, right? Dash in 10 doctors working in the UK comes from Africa. Now, this is a hard one because there's a lot of Indian doctors. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of African people in the UK. Mm -hmm. So I will say, oh, in how many? In, in 10. 10. Yeah. Let's say eight. Um, it's below five. I'm oh my another, God. I'm going to give you another chance. <laughs> so I'm kidding. Um, one in 10 doctors working in the UK comes from Africa. And I think that, I think that, I think that saying that they come from Africa is a thing, but I think that there's a lot more doctors in the UK that are black, meaning that they're, they're second generation immigrants or third generation immigrants. Mm -hmm.
or that they are black and they come from Jamaica, they come from the islands. That's technically not considered as Africa, but it still is um, an African population. I would like to uh, ask just one more question. And of course, like we have so many, so much stuff to talk about. Like something that 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 I would have loved to bring up is, um, you know, just chatting a little bit about about the internet. You know, how has how has the internet changed the way we look at our parents? Because the, the before, let's say in the sixties and seventies, if your dad or your mom or your uncle or whoever tells you, um, don't don't leave the stew in the pot too long your meat will become soggy or your meat will become hard. That's something that your mom or your dad or whoever told you and was true. Now we can actually verify that with the internet. Now I don't have to listen. To, listen, I'm a, I'm a great cook and it's not because my mom taught me. It's because I learned, I learned most of it on YouTube. You know, now we have so much more information than our parents did. So once your dad or your mom tells you, don't 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 do this don't don't leave the the vegetables out in the cold too long they're going to get rotten you can be like no actually there's a study that's been done in the university of harvard by dr what 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 who says this is my mom she's just ringing my name <laughs> you know so it's kind of like disrespectful sometimes like i feel like our parents send us to school when we come back with all this school in our heads they're like oh no you think you're smart you, you sent me to school didn't you to get smart <laughs> oh it, my goodness it, there's such a duality in in these things because just like the concept of uh, patriarchy and the concepts of you know all these different concepts of of stuff that we've now named and labeled there's such a duality to it because you go to school to learn stuff then you bring it back home you're supposed to educate your family in a loving <laughs> and family-esque way. Yeah. The problem becomes when you use your education, your knowledge, your abilities, and your sort of your bartering, your community bartering in, in an oppressive kind of way. My grandmother was a teacher, right? Um, my other grandmother's a, a nurse. And mind you, Black community, these are actually my grandmother's sisters, but it is what it is. So my, my grandmother's a teacher and the other one is a, a nurse. My grand says, I want to go get my pills, but I don't know where this place is. They sent me a text. Where is this place? My ability then goes into Google Maps, Street View. And she says, oh, I know this place. How did you get that? Oh, that's crazy. All right, from now on, whenever I want to know where stuff is, I'm going to ask you to teach me how to navigate Google Maps. Problem, these kids <laughs> come into the home. And I say these kids because I'm part of these kids. They come into the home and they want to oppress people with this new knowledge. Actually, um, you know what my teacher said? My Ma'am, please. <laughs> it's just that the, the internet has, has created absolute monsters out of certain people, but also it's educated a bunch of people because there's things like agriculture where people could just go onto the internet, look at YouTube videos and just find a way to farm stuff. Mm. And you can teach your grand, this is how we're going to start farming. This is how we're going to have vegetation in our home. There, there's really great aspects in teaching them about like, toxic masculinity and anxiety and depression and all of these intangible concepts which oppress us in a loving and community-esque way but mm. i mean i don't really see a lot of people doing that a lot of as south africans would say 702 blacks um <laughs> are walking around and and you don't know how to put a cap on them where they're yeah. not yeah and I have, has there ever been a situation where you feel like, mm, I could school you, mom. <laughs> I could um, school you. Yes. I've chosen to keep my mouth shut now. You know why? Because, like, okay, dad, okay, mom. I see the homophobia. And real talk, I see the homophobia. I see the xenophobia. I see whatever it is, but I'm not going to 
start mm-hmm. unpacking how that's homophobic or how, that, how that's xenophobic or what have you. So sometimes I just choose peace because I'm like, I know, I know what I'm, I, I, I know I could school you and I know I could educate you on this, on this topic, but I'm going to do the respectful thing, quote unquote, and keep quiet, which is what a lot of our parents were taught to do when they were, when they were kids, you know, even if you know more than your mom, you shouldn't be schooling your mom, you know? So I, 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 I would count it a little bit as talking, as talking back to my mom or also talking back to my dad, but not really. Also, just that I just don't see some of these things. I sometimes don't school them on certain things because I just want to keep the peace. But I mean, yeah. I mean, I get that. There are numerous situations where I've kept the peace with strange uncles doing very like sketchy things. But there are situations, for example, my mother, my mother's now opened up to being a parent for adults. So my mother has two daughters, myself and my younger sister is 20 something. So we, we, she's learning how to, to, uh, to adult within the confines of being an, a mother to adults. And she's constantly wanting to learn. So there are things where she'll say, I don't really get this. Mm. Why does trans? Mm. what what does it mean like I don't get it but she's she's not asking from like a rude place she's really asking because she genuinely doesn't understand the concept or the the entire like phrase what do you even mean so we have to break it down in an educational way she's like oh actually when I was in school there was a guy who did that and this and this so Mm. there are parents there are moments where you can school your parents or you can interject with knowledge or dropping gems but just doing it in a way that is that builds this conversation up to be educational and informative and also just fun for both of you where you both meet each other at a certain point and not from a place of I know better than you you're incredibly toxic you're bad for my like calm down (laughs) there are moments when you can do that this is not that moment yeah (laughs) yeah Definitely, I feel you. Um, there's so much. There's actually so much that that that, uh, that we uh, can talk on, and you know, I would encourage um, anyone who's listening to just go start a conversation with one of these people, one of your friends, about uh, being an African child, raising an African child in the 21st century. Um, so yeah, I I am uh, I am extremely happy that we got the chance to do this episode. Noni, do you have any uh, parting shot? Um, just two things, just, you know, respect your parents, <laughs> respect your parents. They're trying. No one knows what they're doing, guys. No one knows. You don't know what you're doing. Just respect your parents for even trying, but also try to bring them along for the journey and, and just have those conversations about being 21st century kids and tell them what you're experiencing. They really enjoy finding out new things, but also finding out new things through their family members and their kids and and coming back to themselves and realizing, oh, maybe I did this wrong or maybe I should rethink this. Just be more open-minded. They're not so terrible. (laughs) Mm. I agree, 100%. Um, I would say, listen to your parents. Um, And secondly, I would say, do not be afraid to dream as an African child, as an African youth. The world is at your fingertips. Um, you might not have the same opportunities as a young German kid might have or a young Australian kid might have, but um, don't be afraid to dream. Dream nonetheless. Um, dreaming is, is a healthy thing. It's what makes the world go round. Anyway, thank you very much to you, Noni, for joining us. And thank you very much to our mind shakers for listening to this episode on raising the 21st century African child. Please don't forget to follow us on social media and tell us all your thoughts about youth and youthness on the, in the African context and whatever it means to you to be young. Most of all, my shakers, we encourage you to go out there, share anything that you might have learned from this episode um, and let us all strive to learn together and do what? Boldly shake the world. world. Thank you all. Have an amazing year. Bye. Thank you for listening through to the end. If you've enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe on your preferred podcast platform or all of them. 
There's going to be plenty of exciting episodes to come, so if you want to catch that, follow us on all social media platforms at Mindshack Podcast. And of course, follow us or subscribe to us on our YouTube platform or our YouTube channel at Mindshack. And of course, see you on the next one.